friends welcome to my channel friends today's video will make you know about the different periods of the english literature so let's get started so at first we will read the classification of the periods thoroughly and then we will discuss it briefly okay so the first we have old english period or anglo saxon period and its time span is 450 or from the beginning to 1066 and then 1066 to 1500 or 1515 is called Middle English period and then 1500 to 1660 is called the Renaissance and there are subdivisions of this Renaissance period like 1558 to 1603 is called the Elizabethan age 1603 to 1625 is called the Jacobian age 1625 to 1649 is called the Caroline age and 1649 to 1660 is called the Commonwealth period then there we have the neoclassical period and the time span of this period is 1600 to 1785. This period is also subdivided into three periods such as the restoration period 1660 to 1700 and then the Augustan age 1700 to 1745 and then we have the age of sensibility 1745 to 1785. Okay. So the next is the romantic period. And the time span of this period is 1785 or 1798 to 1832 or 1837. So the next is the Victorian period and the time span of this period is 1832 to 1880 or 1901. And then 1901 to 1914 is called the Edwardian period. 1910 to 1936 is called the Georgian period. And then 1914 to the unknown year or it is assumed that the year is 1945 is called the modern period and 1945 to the unknown year and it is called the unknown year is 1990 probably is called the postmodern period so these are the different periods of the english literature but friends let me tell you one thing that historians various historians have delineated uh, the eras of british literature in different ways over time and the above divisions are the common divisions okay so now let us jump to our next section which is a synopsis of every period. So the first one is Old English period or Anglo-Saxon period. The term Anglo-Saxon comes from two Germanic tribes, the Anglos and the Saxons. This period of literature dates back to their invasion of Celtic England circa 450. The era ends in 1066 when the Norman friends under William conquered England. Okay. So much of the first half of this period prior to the 7th century 7th century had oral literature a lot of the prose during this time was a translation of some legal medical or religious in nature some works of the period beowulf and the works of cadman and senewulf are important then next we have the middle english period the middle english period sees a huge transition in the language culture and lifestyle of england and results in what we can recognize today as a form of modern or recognizable english this era extends to around 1500 or 1500 as with the old english period much of the middle english writings were religious in nature however from about 1350 onwards secular literature began to rise this period is remarkable for the works of chaucer thomas mallory and robert henderson notable works of this period are pierce plowman sir gawin and the green knight the next we have the renaissance so the renaissance began in italy we all know that okay so what are the important characteristics of this period so renaissance or the early modern period is subdivided into four parts including elizabethan age jacobian age caroline age and commonwealth period so the elizabethan age was the golden age of english drama some of its noteworthy figures include christopher marlowe francis Bacon, Edmund spencer sir walton Rayleigh, and of course william shakespeare the Jacobian is, is named for the reign of James I. It includes the works of John Donne, Shakespeare, Michael Drayton, John Webster, Elizabeth Cray, Ben Johnson, and Lady, Lady Mary Roth. The King James translation of the Bible also appeared during this Jacobian age. We all know that King James's translation of the Bible is very important. The age covers the reign of Charles I. And the notable figures of this period are John Milton, Robert Bourton, and George Herbert. Then we have the Commonwealth Age, which was named for the period between the end of the English Civil War and the restoration of the Stuart monarchy. 
This is the time when Oliver Cromwell, who was a Puritan, led Parliament, who ruled the nation. At this time, public theatres were closed for nearly two decades to prevent public assembly and to combat moral and religious transgressions. John Milton and Thomas Hobbes' political writings appeared in this time and because in this era the drama suffered, the prose writers such as Thomas Fuller, Abraham Coley and Andrew Murrell published prolifically. Okay. Then we have the Neoclassical period. The Neoclassical period is also subdivided into ages, including the Restoration, the Augustan Age and the Age of Sensibility. The Restoration period sees some response to the Puritanical Age, especially in the theatre. Restoration comedies such as Comedies of Manor developed during this time under the talent of playwrights such as William Congreve and John Dryden. Satire became quite commonplace as evidenced by the success of Samuel Butler. Other notable writers on the age include Afrobin, John Bunyan and John Locke. Then there we have the Augustan Age. So the Augustan Age was the time of Alexander Pope and Jonathan Swift who imitated those first Augustans and even drew parallels between themselves and the first city. Lady Mary Oatley Montagu, a poet, was prolific at this time and also noted for challenging stereotypically female roles. Daniel Defoe was also popular in this period. Then we have the Age of Sensibility, which is also referred to as the Age of Dryden. It was the time of Edmund Burke, Edward Gibbon, Hester Lange Strolley, James Boswell and of course Samuel Johnson. Ideas such as neoclassicism, a critical and literary mode and the Enlightenment, a particular worldview shared by many intellectuals, were championed during this age. Uh, novelists to explore include Henry Fielding, Samuel Richardson, Tobias Smollett and Lawrence Turney as well as the poets William Cooper and Thomas Percy. Then we have the Romantic period. The beginning date of the Romantic period is often debated. Some claim that it is 1785, immediately following the Age of Sensibility. Others say that it began in 1789 with the start of the French Revolution. And still it is also believed that 1798, the publication year of the William Wordsworth and Samuel Taylor Coleridge's book, Lyrical Ballads, is the true beginning of Romantic period. This period ends with the passage of the Reform Bill, which signaled the victory era, and with the death of Sir Walter Scott. American literature has its own Romantic period, but typically when one speaks of Romanticism, one is referring to this great and diverse age of British literature, perhaps the most popular and well-known of all literary ages. This era includes the works of such gems of English literature like Wordsworth, Coleridge, William Blake, Lord Byron, John Keats, Charles Lamb, Mary Wollstonecraft, Percy Bysshe Shelley, Thomas De Quincey, Jane Austen and Mary Shelley. There is also a minor period, also quite popular, between 1786 to 1800, it's called the Gothic era. Writers of note for this period include Matthew Lewis, Annie Radcliffe and William Bickford are important. So the next period is the Victorian period. This period is named for the reign of Queen Victoria who ascended to the throne in 1837 and it lasts until her death in 1901. It was the time of great social, religious, intellectual and economic issues heralded by the passage of the Reform Bill which expanded voting rights. It is quite important. The period has often been divided into early or mid and late periods or into two phases, that of the pre raphaelites and that of the aestheticism and decadence. This period is in strong contention with the Romantic period for being the most popular, influential and prolific period in all the English and the literature of the world. The poets of this time include Robert and Elizabeth Barrett Browning, Christina Rossetti, Alfred Lord Tennyson, Matthew Arnold, among others. Thomas Carlyle, John Ruskin and Walter, Walter Peter were advancing the essay form at this time. Finally, post fiction truly finds its place under the auspices of Charles Dickens, Charlotte, and Emily Bronte. Elizabeth Gaskell, George Eliot, Anthony Trollope, Thomas Hardy, William Macpeace, Thackeray, and Samuel Butler are the important figures of this period. The next we have the Edwardian period. This period is named for King Edward VII and covers the period between Victoria's death and the outbreak of the First World War. Although a short period and a short reign for Edward VII, the East era includes incredible classic novels such as Joseph Conrad, Ford, Maddox Ford, 
Rudyard Kipling, A.G. Wells, and Henry James was born in America, but who was spent most of his writing career in England. Okay, so notable poets such as Alfred Noyes and William Butler Yeats, as well as dramatists such as James Barrie, George Bernard Shaw, and John Giles Woodley, are very much important in this period. The next we have the Georgian period. The Georgian period usually refers to the reign of George the Fifth. But sometimes also include the reigns of the four successive Georges from 1714 to 1830. Here, here we refer to the former description as it applies chronologically and covers, for example, the Georgian poets such as Ralph Hodgson, John Masefield, W. H. Davis, and Rupert Brooke. Georgian poetry today is typically considered to be the works of the minor poets, anthologized by Edward Morse. The themes and subject matter tended to be rural or pastoral in nature, treated delicately and traditionally rather than with passion or with experimentation. Okay. Then we have the modern period. The modern period traditionally applies to the works written after the start of the First World War. Common features include bold experimentation with subject matter, style and form, encompassing narrative, verse and drama. W.B. Yeats's words, things fall apart, the center cannot hold, are often referred to when describing the core tenant or feeling of modernist concerns. Some of the most notable writers of this period include the novelists James Joyce, Virginia Woolf, Aldous Huxley, D. H. Lawrence, Joseph Conrad, Dorothy Richardson, Graham Greene, E. M. Foster, and Doris Lessing, and the poets W. B. Yeats, T. S. Eliot, W. H. Auden, Seamus Haney, Wilfred Owens, Dylan Thomas, and Robert Graves, and the dramatists Tom Stoppard, George Bernard Shaw, Samuel Beckett, Frank McGuinness, Harold Pinter, Crail Churchill. New criticism also appeared at this time, led by the likes of Wolf Eliot, William Emson, and others, which reinvigorated literary criticism in general. It is difficult to say whether modernism has ended, though you know that the postmodernism has developed after and from it. For now, the genre remains ongoing. Okay. So, the lastly, we have the postmodern period. The postmodern period begins about the time that the World War II ended. Many believe that it is a direct response to modernism. Some say that this period ended about 1990, but it is likely too soon to declare this period closed. Post-structuralist literary theory and criticism developed during this time. Some notable writers of this period include Samuel Beckett, Joseph Heller, Anthony Burgess, and John Flows, Fenelope May, Lively, and Ayn Banks. Many postmodern authors wrote during the modern period as well. So these are the period of the English literature. So thank you so much friends for watching this video and if you like this video then please subscribe my channel here and don't forget to share and comment. So, bye bye see you in the next session.